Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. This is The Secret Show and it's episode number 216. Mark Sargent and I are here to bring you the latest updates on what's happening regarding Flat Earth and the ongoing search for truth. We will discuss, among other things, Steve Marble, Nathan Thompson, and Clark Bernard. They right now are winging their way to South Korea. They're speakers for a Flat Earth conference there. And I don't know if you followed what's going on with them, but uh, on Facebook and elsewhere, they all grew beards for the event. We will discuss the death of Stephen Hawking at age 76. And there's so much involved with that story. We'll also discuss the premiere of the documentary Behind the Curve. Yes, finally, we know the name. It's set for April in Toronto at the Hot Docs Canadian International Film Festival. And Mark and I are going to be going. I didn't know too much about hot docs, but I looked it up and it's one of the biggest documentary film festivals in the world. And the film is showing in the highest profile category. Now, this is the same documentary team. If you watch this show, you have met. You've met Caroline and Daniel. They've both appeared in a few episodes of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. And they were at the Flat Earth International Conference in Raleigh, North Carolina in November of 2017. They followed Mark and I around and Bob and Chris Pontius and Cammie and I, I'm thick Jaron too, but anyway, we'll get to that. Um, and Mark's going to talk about something very interesting and very scary happening with YouTube. They are countering truth seekers by um, bringing Wikipedia in to um, kind of debunk all the things we talk about. And before oh. we start, I want to say the thumbnail for this video was made for me by Glenn Bordeaux. And I am wearing green in honor of St. Patrick's Day, which is Saturday. This is only Wednesday, but this is my one shot to do so. Not that I'm into St. Patrick's Day. I'm doing it for those old childhood memories. Anyway, Mark Sargent, welcome to The Secret Show. Thank you, Patricia. It is my pleasure to be here. And boy, you had a whole bunch of announcements up front. I know, I certainly did. And there's so many other things, too, that I didn't even get in there that, like I said, we'll get to. Mm. Ah, anyway, so um, I don't know really where you want to start. I don't know. Start at the top. Good news, bad news. I mean, maybe we should start with something on a personal note, which is a really sad thing that happened in your family, because we talk about your family from time to time. We've right. spoke about your grandfather. I've met your grandfather. Yes. And um, you lost him a couple of days ago. Uh, we did. Remember, we just celebrated his 100th birthday recently. Uh, in fact, it was about just about a month ago to the day. And as I've mentioned to you on several occasions, like, look, when you hit 100, your milestones become very, very limited. And a lot of people are just like, yeah, eh, 100, I'm about done. And and that's what he basically did. He was he was pretty much done at 100. So a few days ago, he passed quietly in his sleep and went through hosp the hospice program. And uh, we're going to be doing his memorial here in a couple of weeks. So we're dealing with that. Well, 100's a pretty good run. I mean, that, that may sound callous to say, but I mean, a lot of us don't make it that far. So uh, Nobody in my family's made it to 100, not even close. So, and uh, you know, people can say what they want, but look, the odds are not with you to making make it to 100. It's the life expectancy plus a whole generation. And you were close with your grandfather? Uh, Close-ish. He was on my mom's side. Right, right. But so, I mean, you weren't in an argument with him at the moment. No, of no, were, no, no. You know, no. a lot of people aren't close with their grandparents or parents, but you, your whole family's pretty tight knit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's been on in the Seattle area his entire life, and he's been around for a long time. He he did he didn't really visit me when I was out in Colorado, but that's okay. Not many people did. Mm, well, that's because he secretly disliked you, but it'll all come out in the will. Uh, it's, <laughs> Which is why, which is why I killed him. There you go. All right. So <laughs> we got that out of the way. There you go. I want to say hi to everybody in the live chat. And uh, I'll, I'll mention a couple of names very briefly. Anthony Aaron Armstrong, Timaeus, Sleeping Warrior, Flat Magic, John Watson, Flat Earth Berserker, Zane is here, the mu magician, no, musician, <laughs> Flat Earth Vegans here too. And uh also, Martin Liebke is as well. And Lord Nefarious, Life of Brian, P. Paul, um, Ginger Sugarbush 905, Delta 9, and Joe Green. Is that mean, Joe Green? Um, and who else is here? I'm scrolling up past some of these names that I've already mentioned. Bob from Globebusters is here. And hello, King TL. And 
hello to everyone. And I'll go back into live chat and maybe, I don't know, talk with you guys a little bit later on if we have something to talk about that maybe would require your opinion. Uh, Toto Cult, hello, and Blue Sky Sailing, and NASA Fake, and Ute, and Craig Byron. Okay, I'm going to stop. Oh, and Arthur Vegan Wolf. Okay, Smiley Chris. Stop coming in, new people. <laughs> uh, God Save the Radio is here as well. Anyway. Ah, okay, so um, what do you think that we should talk about most? The most compelling worldwide story, I guess, would be the Stephen Hawking issue. Stephen Hawking, RIP, case closed. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are saying he died on Pi Day. Pi Day would be 3.14, which is actually today, March 14th. It's but close, he died no. yesterday, so... Yeah. The memes came out today, and I'm sure he would have liked to have died on Pi Day, I suppose. Yeah. I don't know. Well, the whole thing about Stephen Hawking has many of us and has had many of us uh, truth seekers in general um, puzzled um, whether or not he was replaced. I mean, a couple of photos, of course, he has different eyes. The shape of his head is different. The way he holds his hands is different in various photos. And uh, the disease that he had wouldn't cause any of those changes. A lot of people say that he was, um, he died kind of like uh, Paul McCartney and was replaced and nobody was, uh, was, was told anything about it. Hmm. That would require a lot of people knowing, including the woman that he was married to for quite some time. Um, what's your take on him? Is I, that really him? Or was he a dummy? The, the, the only thing I knew is that whatever wh the voice box text that we were getting was not done by him. There's, I don't care what technology you, you Speak have. Speak and spell kind of thing. Yeah, he was generating a lot of text at, right. for for a guy that was supposedly only doing it with eye movements at some point. That didn't really make much sense to me. And if they have no. the technology, there's a whole lot of people out there could that could benefit from it. But I don't know anybody who. Yeah, has yeah. And uh, from an image standpoint, I can understand what, why they did what they did. You know, continuity. Keep, yep. Yep, he's one of the smartest men in the world. So, but he sounds I different. What? Oh, it must be fake. So that's right. why they, if this well, is true, why they well, kept that voice the same. If the, if you want a little tip on on how you can tell the the authenticity authenticity of this is that even though we have much better voice box technology, we we have for years as far as you yeah, know. I mean, I've got so, Siri on my phone. Yeah, yeah. So, Siri, got, excuse me, on my phone. Sakes, it, it was, but they never changed his. Right. Because that would ruin the continuity, you know, because once his voice became different, it's like, oh, well, you know, then you can't relate back. I'm already... And then you also might notice, wait a minute, his eyes are a different color and hmm, yep. the shape of his skull is a little bit different. Keep everything as well, the same as possible. A lot of people think, and you know, nobody here can prove it one way or the other what the real story was. We all have our theories, right. but people do say that he was... I mean, obviously, a brief history of time, he was a, a genius, a real genius. Sure. But he, the theory is, may have stumbled across something, some kind of truth, and they decided to kind of pull the plug on him. And whether that meant kill him with, uh, you know, just literally killing him and having a fake dummy in place or mm -hmm. keep him... Um, I guess, bound to the wheelchair and unable to speak with the use of drugs and electroshock treatments or something like that, mm -hmm. and then put whatever the powers that should not be wanted him to say, use him as a mouthpiece, uh, that that was put into place. I don't know. I put the uh, that he was just a uh, you know plastic dummy out the window because too many people would have brushed by him in an elevator or or something like that. Yeah. Um, even his own family, there's even grandchildren involved. I think one of the quotes when he died was, the grandchildren will said that they will miss him forever. That was a weird thing for children to say, miss him forever. Miss him for the rest of our lives sounds like a lot more normal thing yeah. to say. <laughs> yeah. Unless they're guaranteed immortality or something we don't know about. I mean, he helped explore the concepts of space. So mm -hmm. did I think he waste his life's work? Eh. It, it's in the end, it'll probably be muted. So even if we don't, those of us who are involved with flat earth believe the thing, a lot of the things, I mean, some of them, but a lot of the things that he, he brought to the table, mm -hmm. can't say that he was an idiot. Obviously, um, he was a genius and the bigger geniuses than him decided to use that. Right. Him. 
And regardless of whether he as a human being is now dead or whether he died a long time ago and now a replacement is dead, rest in peace yeah. either way. Yeah. I think that they used him as much as they could and decided to pull the plug. Nobody lives with the disease that they said he had for the amount of time. Only him. He's the longest lived. Right. And that Anyone should tell that. you right there. Yeah. yeah. Weird, right? Yeah. Sort of like the Mars rover. Exactly. That no thing keeps on going. That long. <laughs> must use Energizer Bunny batteries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so must have Stephen Hawking. Um, really, really sad story because we don't know really what happened. And all of us, when a famous person dies, there is a level of mourning, even if you don't care for that person, because that person was part of your life. Right. And it always was puzzling to me. What's the story with Stephen Hawking? Is he alive? Is he? I don't really know what everybody who's watching thinks about it, but there's definitely a lot of conspiracy theories about it. Um, you know, like, what do you think, though? What do you think exactly? What, was that the guy that was born Stephen Hawking that Who, died me? in that wheelchair? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. Only, only that the only thing I can tell you is what kind of tripped my spidey sense. Mm -hmm. that comic book thing, which was the the text. I'm sorry yes. when they when they were describing how he typed the volumes of of material that he was cranking out. I'm going even your average person would have a, a tough time with that with a full-blown keyboard and it's got to take him longer and so uh, i go along with the people that say that at the very least he was just a guy in a wheelchair being pushed around and it and they were they were using him like you said for his iconic symbol you know the really right. intelligent guy in the wheelchair crippled but yet still promoting the globe promoting yeah. space yeah well, here's something that will alert your spidey senses. Mm. Albert Einstein died March 14th, 1879. And I see reports that Stephen Hawking died March 14th, 2018. And I don't know why they keep saying March 14th. Why do they keep saying that? It's, I don't it know. Yesterday. I remember hearing about it yesterday, but I've seen this. Well, I know and it was just because we, we were sent, I was sent this during the show. When I was, but when here's I the it. part, even if you want to throw out the March 14th, right. they both died at the age of 76. But then again, lots of people die at the age of 76. However, mm, kind of spidey sense tingling. Sure. So, seven, and seven and six is 13 after all. And that information comes from the BBC News, and it comes courtesy of Karen B., who, uh, who sent it along. I know um, her. You know her. Hey, we all know her. Glenn, the guy that gave you your thumbnail, is that the same Glenn that's doing the meetup down in Arizona? Yes, it is. Let's talk about Glenn and the guy who did the uh, the thumbnail for this video. Yes, he's got a meetup coming up. And why don't you tell us all about it, Mark? Uh, really? You're going to put me on the spot? Excuse me. I, I, David I, Weiss just said, born the same day, not died. Born the same day, oh. not died. But some of, the, some of the material that I received, like what I was sent from Karen, she didn't create it, did say they died on the that did, did say that Stephen died on the uh, on the 14th, which I don't know why that it's disinfo, I guess, because we I remember when it came out. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to pull up my now. Stephen the, Hawking was born January 8th, 1942. Hmm. And I it looks like I don't really know. I don't really know. I'm just looking at these newspaper clippings and it makes absolutely no sense to me why March 14th, 1879 and March 14th, 2018 are highlighted. So, yeah. There are a, uh, the reason why it's taking me a minute or two. We know he didn't die on the 14th because it's today. Unless we're no. in a black hole. No, no. <laughs> Wait, did you just say that? The um, uh, there are a bunch of meetups, as as you can imagine. You know, every, spring's starting up and, and everyone's getting all hot and frisky was that a cat yeah that's uh greer my female black cat and she does that she picks up a toy and runs in here with it in her mouth and kind of tries to get me to play with her isn't that sweet? that's nice uh let me let me rattle them off real quick not just the phoenix ones so uh chicago march 21st bristol uk april 14th march 31st st paul minnesota march 25th cleveland ohio April 29th, Strongville, Ohio, Winston-Salem, March 13th, 
Manchester, UK, March 31st, Phoenix, Arizona, March 27th, and I think that's it. <laughs> I did all those in a week. That's a, that's a lot. That's a lot of meetups coming up. And the promo, of course, for the conference is going to be in Denver. And the, We're going uh, to that one. Yep, the conference in Canada, which I'm still waiting on the details for. Hint, wink, whoever's listening. And the um, the premiere. Should, yes. we seg should we segue into that? Yeah, I kind of did a little bit of that in the intro, but I do want to just say one more time thanks uh, to Glenn Bordeaux, who did the uh, thumbnail. And just once again, you know, plug his, his uh, meetup, Phoenix, Arizona, March 27th at the OHSO Brewery in Phoenix, Arizona. So that's the 27th. Yeah, yeah, it's I'm I'm so excited that everybody's doing these. That's great. And it's it's crazy. I remember the very first flat Earth meetup that there was, and then how it all just is is what it is today, where it's not such a oh my gosh, it's more like oh yeah, just another day. Really, you're trying flat to do Earth the land. trying to trying to get in that that shot that you had the first flat Earth meetup. I did. You, you beat me by <laughs> one day. Yeah, one day. Yeah, it was uh, on Earth Day of 2016. Yeah. But that doesn't mean two or more flat earthers didn't have an unofficial flat earth meetup long before that. Almost, yeah, almost two years ago. Mm. Hard to believe. Time flies. But at the same time, look what we've accomplished in two years. Well, we've awakened, not us, I mean, we, you and I or anything, but we as in those of it us, us collective, it was all <laughs> us. have awakened many, many people to all of the truth uh, because People who are involved with flat Earth are talking about well, Stephen Hawking, for example, or things that happen in schools um, involving things that you hold in your hand and something flies out of it and can hurt others. Boy, was that vague. Um, all of these events that happen and um, just all the craziness of our world, 9-11, everything. Yeah. We, we talk about all of it. And once you get involved in one aspect of seeking truth, all that other stuff is like, it's like opening up a closet door and like something falls out. It's an overstuffed closet. It's all coming out. There's no way to get that door closed again. True. True. It's, it's been an incredible journey so far and I'm excited to see where it goes. Well, yeah, let's talk about the, the, um, documentary that's coming out behind the curve. Lisa's not named behind the eight ball. <laughs> I know, and and I don't blame you for being a little. You know, there's all sorts of different titles you could give on give this thing, and behind the curve sort of sounds derogatory, but at the same time, you got to remember that most of the world out there still looks at this as insane, and so in order to grab them, you can't you can't make a movie and call it flat Earth, the greatest idea ever. You know, I know I'm I'm, I'm taking it to the extreme end, but you can't name it even something remotely positive. You, because the filmmakers, and they were really clear about this when they made it, the filmmakers are trying to paint it objectively. Similar to, think of a longer version of the ABC News story, for example. They didn't really come out for it. They didn't really come out against it. They just stated both sides. They leaned towards our side, of course, which, which was different from the others. And that's what the documentary team has been doing. The documentary team is really, they, they weren't even really tracking the arguments as much as like, okay, let's follow two or four flat earthers in their lives and see where it takes them on their path. And so they followed us, you and I, for the better part of a year, starting last, what, spring, end of spring. They were up here and then they came down and visited you. And then they came up here and took me down to the eclipse. And then they came down and- You came here. I came, came here. with you. Mm -hmm. and then they went to Los Angeles and I believe they even went out to Denver and so who have they uh, met with um chris pontius I yep chris chris pontius i believe bob from globusters yes bob from globusters and i'm just going to say bob and cammy because well you know they're a couple what about um jaron did that happen mm, i do not think so well I I well know. if he shot anything they were waiting for a test it was a last minute thing mm -hmm. so if they did shoot it nobody's told me so a little bit exciting because when you and i go to the um premiere premiere um at the film festival we've not seen this thing nope. at this point nope it's going to be uh, honest to god i don't know if i can do it sober <laughs> i really don't know if i can do it sober i now understand and i'm i am 
it is going to be one of the worst moments of my life in that I understand why actors try to drill themselves. A lot of them say, you know, people that are involved in the movie industry that they don't watch their own stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's relative because it doesn't matter how attractive hint, you know, that's to you attractive or talented or anything that's that you, you are, you still hold yourself to a higher standard. You know, there's a self-esteem issue. You know, everyone looks in the mirror and goes, Oh God, help. You know, I mean, every once in a while you go, yeah, you know, but sometimes most of the time you don't. And so when you see yourself on screen, when, you know, it's not a mirror, it's being shot from the outside. Oh my God. I mean, you know me anyway. I'm, you know, kids throw rocks at me, you know, villagers with pitchforks and torches, you know, burn him, you know, and I get And with chased. me, butterflies just come out of the sky and birds and land on my shoulder and hand. I don't know. Yeah, this is why we don't talk more. So <laughs> the... <laughs> So yeah, so sitting there, I, I don't know if I'm gonna do it. I may ask for an advanced screening just, but I don't know if I can do that because then I'd have to do it twice. Because then if I like hated something in the in the first time I screened it, I'd be like, oh god, here it comes. And you know, I don't know. Can we can we pull this off? Can we actually sit in an audience of people, even know knowing that they don't know who we are? Right. Can you can you sit there? I mean, do do movie people actually go into a cinema with sunglasses and hats and and watch movies just to see how the audience reacts? Well, what will happen is you and I will not be enjoying it the way that the audience will be enjoying it, and we'll be saying, "Oh God, oh no, Whoa. I know Whoa. used. Oh, you left that in. Oh, <laughs> that's that's where you shot me. Really, that's the lighting. That's what nice you chose? shot of Mark's butt. Great. <laughs> now, no, I get it. I know. I mean, I'm understanding. You know, I'm a big film guy, so now I understand. I have a whole new appreciation for what actors say. You know, you know, when they point at the director and they say, "Make me look good," I get that now. I get that. You know, or why some people say, "Only shoot me from my left side," or "Only shoot me from my right side." I know what you mean, but for me, I'm not worried about how I look. I'll look good and really, bad like really, all of us. You know, really, good, yeah. photo sh good photos or bad photos, we all take them, right? But, you know, <laughs> you just wonder what it is that you've said because they, we were just talking like we were on the oh, show. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the other part that people don't don't remember. Is we flow chat. And, we and, were wired. And yes, and we had mics on even when we went into the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, we had mics on, and you what what you don't realize is yeah, when the first hour or so you're wearing a microphone, you don't you're like okay, you know you're watching what happens, and then you get caught up in the moment, and you absolutely forget that microphone's there. So what did they use? What they didn't? But if they're inviting us up, you, you know I don't right. think it's going to be. Right, and they're both very nice people, and it's not yeah. going to be a hit piece on flat Earth. The reason it's got that title. Um, behind the curve, that's it, right? Right, behind the uh, curve. I almost said behind the glow. Um, behind the curve is because they thought if they put Flat Earth in the title, it wouldn't get as much attention. And right. a lot of people who are just anti-Flat Earth or think it's crazy wouldn't even bother watching. Right. So, And and it's go. a term, I know, I know why they, I mean, it's, it's an interesting term to choose. It intrigues me because the I, like, for example, the Clint Eastwood movie that came out recently, The Trouble with the Curve, which was about it was a baseball movie. I know. Uh, I looked up a couple other curve movies ahead of the curve, of course. Yes. Which you know we we've all used. What about she's got curves? I think she's that got well went straight and, to DVD. <laughs> really, I should segue into Baby Got Back at that point. <laughs> that was actually the opening song. Weird. How you knew that? That is. <laughs> I don't know what music they're they're gonna use. I don't know what they have the rights to. I hope well, they use twin serpent music. All I can tell you is we're going up there, and this could turn into you and I being killed and lynched there. No, no but it could be <laughs> it could be sold as a bigger project. You know, That'd they've got so, cool. so much footage, and it's very it's very, as much as I would love to see it do well. At the same time you you know realization that you know a studio can come in and say yeah we want that project oh we're gonna gut everything and reshoot it but we want it or they may say okay we want what else do you have or they'll say hopefully though there's enough stuff in the cutting room floor that we can re-edit it or whatever there's all sorts of different things that could happen but i'm excited i'm glad you know they they said they they were gonna do this and they've been true to their word yeah, indeed. So. And they were incredibly professional. And I did see Bob from Globusters saying he was uh, indeed definitely um, shot for this. Uh, he this signed the waiver. Oh, yeah. They... Jaren with a, with a test. He oh, did good. an experiment. Good. So Excellent. And, and, and Chris Pontius, too, as we had mentioned earlier. And uh, 
Chris Pontius, by the way, has just made a mega model, um, a huge model, 51, 51 inches. Wow, that's big. Yeah, he's calling it his Rolls Royce of all models. He's going to have a video posted quite soon, but it's a big one. You basically and have to drive and pick that one up because otherwise you have to ship. Probably a Rolls Royce. <laughs> Seriously, you'd have to you'd have to use freight shipping. Yeah, exactly. So wow. I don't know. Check uh, Chris Pontius's channel. He might have the video on that up right now. So we are going to be attending this thing, and it's going to be the end of next month. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not know the dates yet because the festival itself runs for two weeks. Right. It's basically a two week pitch meeting for everybody that comes in it's like buy our film project and you know some people's are finished some people's aren't this one's finished as far as i can tell so the people who made this didn't make it because hey flat earth's a cool idea they didn't make it because let's get in a film festival and people will applaud they yeah. made it because i think they someday want to sell it somewhere oh they absolutely no it's, and if it's... they are successful in selling it and fingers crossed it's a very good portrayal of flat earthers and i think it's going to be it will get more exposure of the flat earth concept to you know john q and jane w public out there it will because of uh something i mentioned a few years ago which is all remember all mainstream needs is one excuse to latch onto it. And this is that excuse, meaning it's a mainstream project done by a Los Angeles group and whoever distributes it, it's like, okay, once they put it out there, then it's fair game and anyone can go after it, uh, you know, for whatever, you know, for better or for worse. And uh, seriously, opening up with behind the curve as a title will work because it, you'll put you all start all already will start you in the negative and then it can only get better from there. So, you know, what's the worst they can say? Behind the curve is actually behind the curve or behind the curve is what they they left flat out earth out of the title for good reason. I'm sure they did a, you know several focus groups and realized that every time they put flat earth in the title, people just winced. And so we'll see. We'll see. You know, we'll see if, if they change the title in the end. We'll see who picks it up. We're there to help promote it. And somebody wants to talk to us great we're not going to be there for the full two weeks i don't know how long we're going to be there probably in, in and out um ditrh is saying that his fatty senses are tingling about the project and he's hoping that it's nothing negative um uh, I, the, if if it is then it's the biggest con job i've ever heard of because these people were as genuine as i've ever met but i've been fooled by a super genuine person a couple of them before in my uh, life and I, I, Happens this is this us. is a little different. Okay, let, let, let's call let, let's call out the the main guy here, the guy that picked it up as is basically a side project, which was Daniel. Daniel is Dan like the brother that well, I already have a brother. He's the second brother I wish I had. He's sad. yeah, yeah. He he he's somehow related to Ethan Hawke. Definitely, he's a cat whisperer. All right, so <laughs> there's not many people. If he's actually this horrible, awful person that's that's here to try to destroy flat Earth, wow then he deserves a standing ovation. Yeah, exactly. In fact, if indeed they destroy or try to, anyway, destroy Flat Earth in the documentary, you and I will stand up at the event and give them a standing ovation. Yeah, we will. Uh, because there's there's Before no, no he's, he's way too nice. Caroline there. is way too nice. All those guys. You know, the and you gotta remember this started out as a side project, just as a curiosity type thing. No different than when ABC News sent their lead guy uh, uh Darrell uh he he was down there at the conference and then he's like he, he's feeling it out feeling it out. I was going yeah bring the team bring the team and then ABC ran the piece this is sort of like what happened with Daniel Daniel came up here he's he, he doesn't really have much faith in it he's he's really cautious when he's talking to me thinking I might stab him or something and then <laughs> Step, step, step. And then uh then he realizes after a while, he's like going, wait, this this may actually be something. And then he's they start sending the dailies back, and you know, they're watching the stuff back at the in their in their their little studio, and they're going, Yeah, yeah, this is this has potential. And you you don't send a six-man team out to the conference unless you have pretty high hopes in and they've got some good stuff, I guarantee it. They've shot a lot of footage. 
I think that the whole thing will be, even for somebody who has no idea if flat earth is even a thing, it will be entertaining. Yes. And there will be some people who will be entertained and they'll be accidentally informed yep. and they'll walk away saying, you know, when I first was sitting in this chair thinking, oh my gosh, this is about flat earth. Should I walk out? Wait a minute. That makes sense. Wait, wait, that makes sense. And they might go home and look into some things. And that's the point. Remember right. that how we all started, love it or hate it, Flat Earth is almost impossible to ignore. Almost impossible. Uh, the Josh, um, Flat Earth Uber, or Uber Flat Earth, mm -hmm. uh, that thing that he released recently where he was just talking at a restaurant with a friend, someone at a table overheard and freaking lost his mind. That's what will happen if this thing goes mainstream. You know, if, if there's an actual show, if it's a documentary, if it's a reality television show, someone will be just glancing at it. You know, it'll be, you know, it'll be on the background. It's like, what are you watching? It's like, oh, why, why, you know, and they'll start spinning into another dimension. It'll be fantastic. I had uh, some touch up paint done here and my car has the F L A T R T H, which is very obviously spelling out flat earth license plate. And they had to go into my garage where the car is parked to get the paint because I have it organized right. in there. And the uh, guy who was painting my house, who I wasn't talking to about flat earth, he went in there and said, well, that's one thing we disagree about. The earth's not flat. I mean, he didn't have to you, offer that comment. He yeah. didn't have to offer that comment, no. but flat earth is polarizing. It if is. I had anything else on that plate, like Trump or something like that, the chances of which, oh my God, I would never have. But if I did, um, he probably he probably keep his he mouth shut or maybe take a yeah. but yeah. this this is absolutely generic the reason why it's one of the reasons why it's resonating is it's very simple to understand and everyone regardless if they know it or not has a subliminal opinion on it they just don't it, it's never occurred to them until now because remember up and up until this point in their life it's always been the earth is a globe we used to think it was flat the earth is a globe but we used to think it was flat and then all of a sudden you hear somebody say Oh yeah, by the way, it's flat. What you, it's a knee-jerk reaction. Everyone does it. You did it. I did it. Everybody that's listening to us now, we all did it. And this is just the next level. So I can't wait. I'm very, very excited to see. And we'll let people know after we see it next time we come on. In fact, I think you and I should do it while we're there. We should do a before show live stream. Sure. And then, and then the after done, show, after we show, we should tears. do an after party with us. And then, if Carolyn and Daniel have not done us dirty, which they haven't, they won't. No, we, if they're free, because maybe they won't be free, I don't know. Maybe we can have them sit down and, you know, do a little show after. I'll strangle okay. them both because they are small. <laughs> yeah. But no, that won't happen. None of that's going to happen. Nothing no. bad's going to happen. Speaking of bad things going to happen, though, everyone is <laughs> saying, that in April, that there's going to be some event in Texas. But you know how it always is. Whatever. Number 23rd, why, wait, why the world. Okay, Google first Google. off, why Texas? Um, I don't know. I think Texas seems like the wrong place to do that because Texas is full of the powers that should not be. Why it's would not, they want to mess up their own backyard? I mean, the bushes live here. For it's not sake. generic in Texas? or it's not, or it's not a generic location, but the date is in April? Supposedly. And, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. What is it? I don't know. No one knows. You know, people yeah, are theorizing it's going to be a lifting of the veil. It's going to be another shooting. They hired a bunch of crisis actors. Whatever. Is any of this true? I don't know. Yeah, the, uh, the, you know, I, I'm looking for truth, but I'm not going to tell you I have the truth because really, technically, none of us have the truth. We're only looking at things that, like we were saying, ping right. our spidey senses, which point to uh, fraud. You know, when it comes to the the shape of the earth and these events that keep popping up here, there, and everywhere, and everything else, um, if you go around telling people I know exactly how nine eleven was done, you'd probably be lying because you don't. You have theories. Um, I can say I know it wasn't done like they told us, and just like I can say the earth isn't what they tell us either. So, mm. yeah. Um, got a lot of interesting comments going on uh, in chat. Want to say hi to Andersais and Suzette and Felix and Renee Ibar Lucia, who says Flat Earth destroyed the alien invasion. What do you think about that? Do you think that they're still going to pull that alien card at one point? In fact, yeah. I think you and I were discussing that recently, and you're saying, I think I remember you saying that they're still going to try to do something. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would. 
It's just that whatever happens, you can make up whatever story you want. You can land or introduce. The, the big thing is you want to introduce some secondary species, humanoid species, if you can. They've got to have advanced technology. They've got to be better looking than us. Those are two absolute requirements. And then after that, you have to decide what story you're going to give them. Backstory. Are they from another planet? Are so they, they won't be creepy, scary, horrible. Can't be. Can't be. It's it's nice. sorry. There's there's certain rules you have to follow, and that is you cannot introduce a, a, a civilization that's that offends us in any sort of way. Insect. So they're not going to be here to eat us. No, nor can they even look like they're supposed to eat us. You know, they can't so be, they'll be here to help us. Yes, they they are mm. here to help. Isn't that and then that that's a great line? Is it? We come in peace. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, here that, to help. That standard thing. When you hear it, run. <laughs> yeah, the, but the the question is, what what sort of backstory do they give them? Is it going to be from another planet? Is it going to be interdimensional? Are they going to rescue us? You know, you could come in with a really good story if you wanted to and say, "Look, your planet's in trouble." Right? Put everybody in a panic state almost immediately. Oh, they could say your planet's in trouble and it's global warming. Mm -hmm. And we've got to get you off. You've got, you know, give you a rough well, time. That's what Stephen Hawking or whoever was controlling him or whatever, feeding the words into the speak and spell was saying that we need speak to leave the spell. planet. We need to leave the planet. That's that what dates you, the speak and spell. Well, it kind of, yeah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> voice to text protocol. How about that? <laughs> nice. That uh, but you could say we want to relocate you and, you know, it's going to happen in three months and we'll bring down the ships and you have plenty of time to pack all your stuff up, but you got to go. And who wouldn't listen? Yeah, there'd be some suspicion, but if it was put out all over the, uh, you know, what we have seven billion people in the world and six billion smartphones, I think they might go for it if if you want to go that route. But yeah, you've got to introduce another species eventually. You have to. We we've why 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 build up all that great science fiction over the years to where even you know my grandfather, hundred years old, even he knew science fiction movies. So he was aware of them. So whether you're age six or age 80, you know these things. You have a reference point. So if an alien ship shows up now, it's not going to be, wow, what's that? You're going to say, oh, it's those guys. Okay, what do they want? There won't be sh shock and awe won't really happen. Hmm. You know? So anyway, I don't think anything's going to happen next month. If it does, great. But if it's submarines are premier, oh, well, they'll be hell to pay. I was always thinking what they'd do is they'd say that they found life on another planet, but then they wouldn't have to do anything like have actual aliens or use blue beam. They would just tell us that they have, which would keep their yeah. game rolling along a lot longer. But, but they've already been saying stuff like that. Uh, you know, if it's fine, you say, oh, we discovered life. Really, with what detection ability? And can you replicate it now? Are you speaking with them? What's the transmission time between the two? And does it make it more important that if you're going to do it that you've got to keep it local? You got to say that you found something on Mars, you know, something not just the face. The face started talking, or something on Venus. Oh my gosh! Or, <laughs> and you're on acid. Oh wait. Or the or the hexagon <laughs> on the top of Saturn turned into a rave party. I don't know yeah. something something that you can relate to something off at a distance where remember it's got unfortunately the 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 general population you've got to keep it so simple now that you i don't think you can go beyond the solar system because then people get lost they they just won't how do you how do you, how does how does the grapevine tell it to their neighbor if if you can't keep it local hmm. anyway it doesn't matter you just all you need keep it simple golden spaceship land it in some nato country mm -hmm. have them come out Speak in sign language or and translate beautiful it. Beautiful with like they're made of some some kind of silvery material. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. But preferably in sunlight. Don't do it on a rainy day. Change the weather if you have to, and then uh, um, make them at least six and a half, seven feet tall. All right, the, right. You know, sort of very like gentle health. and ethereal, and maybe yeah. they'd even be new agey. Mm. Like. For, you're pretty much describing the elves from Lord of the Rings, but yeah, yeah kind of like that. I'm <laughs> yeah. not saying I'm promoting new age. I'm just saying that there is a big push toward that these days and it would be very well accepted by many people and yeah. other oh, people yeah. would be like, told you they're doing it to us. <laughs> the it, the and people would. If they threw in, not, I don't, don't want to be controversial here, mm -hmm. but if they threw in a biblical reference, they would get acceptance from the church if they said, you know, they said, oh, yeah, by the way, we got a note from God. <laughs> it's right here. A note from God. You kind of, Seriously. the way you said that is uh, reminding me of the Blues Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're on a mission from God. <laughs> exactly. 
Uh, <sighs> but, but yeah, all you have to do is say that and it's written in like golden calligraphy and it's, you know, shiny and sparkly. Who Who's to say that they wouldn't? Or you bring down, uh, yeah, go old school and say, oh, yeah, well, you'll care a big tablet. There wasn't just Ten Commandments. There were a few more, and they're right here. And I know that's a Mel Brooks joke, but you worry, Moses actually had 20, and he broke a, a set on the way down. A set. The, <laughs> like the Encyclopedia Britannica. Exactly. Exactly. Just order some more. <laughs> but that's what I would do. If I was going to do it, if I was going to write it, that's that's how I would do it. And I think it's got a, uh, a good chance of pulling off. And you got to do it soon. The people are getting too too antsy, and they're bored. The entertainment, uh, the requirements for entertainment is very is, low these days. Well, they need something. A, they're, a they're dust hungry. moat blowing across the screen is entertaining these days. I mean, I see people who I thought were intelligent playing little games, video games like Candyland or something on their phone. Can Candy Crush. Candy Crush or what? I mean, I that's okay. I don't Can, Candyland was the board game that we oh, played. Yeah. When we were and I never liked that one either because it seemed dumb. But people are very, very enthralled with that when they could be looking up things about truth. They could doing be doing real research, which be. is actually fun and entertaining and involves your mind. I said but a guy to a guy because he was he was voicing that concern, and I told him about a movie party. My last movie party that I ever went to was a friend's house, and they had a choice of watching JFK, which none of them had seen. Or Serenity, which is based on the Firefly television series, which all of them had seen at least three times. So that's what they and, picked, right? And they chose Serenity. And I'm going, I'm going, You've JFK seen is it a, already. A freaking masterpiece. What? <laughs> and they go, and no, and the line, the, the one, the, basically the spokesperson of the group, my one of my friends, he goes, he goes, Mark, he goes, we don't want to learn anything. We oh just want my to be, gosh. we just want to be entertained. I, I've heard that from somebody, a friend yeah. of mine a long time ago when I lived in New Orleans who said to me, I don't want to learn when I was I trying to tell learn. him about something. I don't want to learn. It it's like, not like I'm a teacher at all, but it was just a person I was close with and I wanted to share information about things. Right. You know, like you do with somebody that you're close with, but now they just want something, you know, light and fluffy. And yeah. I like light and fluffy too, of course. It's part of what makes life rich. All the different, all the different uh, heights, all the different textures. But no. you know, I, I want substance at the end of the day, as they say. Yep, yep. So anyway, I I completely forgot what we were talking about. I don't even know. We yeah. What is this? Why are we here? Why? Who are you? <laughs> Um, I want to say hi to uh, Paula, Knowledge Scavenger, and Rob Morrill is here, who says Serenity sucked. <laughs> Serenity did not suck, but compared to Firefly, the series, uh, it's another story. Um, uh, channel called Do You Still Believe North is Up says they make those video games addictive. In true. Uh, Positively Godless says love JFK. I love JFK too. And for you, I know that that was the one movie that, that got uh, me started. You got you started really opened your eyes like people really lie there's yeah. such a thing as conspiracies a conspiracy thing didn't didn't exist and oliver stone got in trouble for it look back in the in the archives you guys get a chance when he put that movie out when he was going around doing the talk show circuit the government was sending suits generic suits marketing guys that were trying to explain to people that that the techniques he was using were creating a false conspiracy. You know, basically Oliver Stone mixed real footage with his own footage seamlessly to create an entire canvas worth of conspiracy, and it was working. And there were there were grumblings out there, and the government was was sending people out to, to try to say, look. It's just a movie. That's basically the short version of it. And he was good, but he was never allowed to get back into that. So when he was finally shoulder tap tapped for the World Trade Center movie, everyone was thinking, oh, my God, he's going to turn into a conspiracy. Nope. It was a straight up hero movie. That's all it was. And they made sure of that he was never, ever going to do a conspiracy movie again. Well, I mean, JFK isn't truth either, but it takes us away from the story that they've fed us and that is, helps open your mind which is great it is convincing enough the deep throat monologue done by donald sutherland towards mm -hmm. the end of that movie was one of the finest monologues in cinema do you it think people these days know about they know a lot about gate events blah 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 gate blah blah gate but do people yeah. still know the terminology deep throat 
Well, unfortunately, and then maybe uh, one of those lost, like you know, like the hand sim symbol of this, which well, means roll your window down. People don't do that anymore because uh, it's just a button you push. Fortunately, <laughs> the deep throat references, and I can't mention because this is a family show, kids. No, well, uh, I mean Watergate. That was one of the characters. That was that was deep one throat, of the but people that was, involved that was in Watergate the during the yep. Nixon administration. Yes. So yeah. that's where that, that it, comes it, from. It, it refers to, yeah, it refers to a government operative who's sort of like a whistleblower, but he tries to remain anonymous, but you can use him as a resource. Mm. And it and it was great. I mean, it was a fan. Oh, my God. I love watching that monologue. It's so, so great. And it runs for like, it's long. It runs for like 10, 12 minutes, I think. It's just it's great. You know, he hits all the notes and Donald Sutherland does a, does a fantastic job of delivering. So, yeah, JFK strongly recommended even to this day. And then there's the porn movie Deep Throat, but that's a whole different story. Well, well now it's a thing. Now it's actually a, a, a you know, it's a category. Deep, you know, like Linda Lovelace, you yeah. know, like midgets and <laughs> midgets, Asian people. <laughs> well, Asian people and midgets have sex like anybody else. Well, yeah, yeah I know what you're you, saying. You know what I mean, though. Like I a mean, fetish. It, it's a category. Yeah, it's right. a fetish. You know what? I feel very comfortable talking about sex stuff here you know oh, why good. let's let's no let's no no no. Sex <laughs> no no but i Patricia's mean here, sex talk <laughs> no compared to what i i feel very worried talking about which are any things that have happened in any schools or in that uh city where they do lots of gambling you know what i'm saying that's the stuff you're afraid to talk about these right. days on youtube sex yeah whatever <laughs> that's a good that's a good segue for us as well because uh yeah there's certain things we're not really supposed to talk about on YouTube anymore. Well, you can do it but it's at your own peril. And Jaron was the the latest victim of that which is as you know, you can the you could be now hit with bullying in addition to little copyright things. And bullying the YouTube does not joke around. They'll they'll smack you around for it. But the YouTube is now where's my article? I should read this. It's really short. There was an article that came out today, this morning. And you read it, right? Mm, I I, it. Yes, I skim read it. I, I put it in the intro. You, I figured you'd talk like about it. Sitting in bed sick and I'm in a chair next to your bed. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually really, really bad news for us. But no, no, I don't, we'll I don't get think around so. it. We'll get I don't think so. I no, I think it's a smoke screen. I don't think they're oh. going to do anything because remember, oh. we are currently, and I'm going to say this ahead before I read the article. We are currently YouTube's darlings. You can the flat earth generates millions and millions and millions and millions of hours or minutes or whatever you want to call it of viewing. And that's because people yeah, and that's generally millions and millions and millions of dollars for YouTube and exactly their sponsors, and, and, but not for us. <laughs> Not necessarily for us when we get a little bit, but the but compared to YouTube, I mean, YouTube gets a lot of money. And look, they're like any station. They want you to stay on their station and never, ever leave. And right. so when somebody watches, remember what that guy said before when he was doing the metrics, when somebody watches 20 flat earth videos in a row, that's a lot of time. That's you all know? of us here who are watching the show. We're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's and, normal. And, but you know, it's not just 20 videos. The average person, when they do flat, go down the flat earth rabbit hole, they're in it for two weeks. Can you imagine what the average the Nielsen would do if somebody was watching ABC for two weeks? You know, skipping work, just watching ABC, it would it would screw up the ratings horribly, and that's what we're doing with. So YouTube doesn't want to lump us into other conspiracies. Like, yeah, 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 shootings, yeah, 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 yeah. The flat Earth people, let's keep them going because <laughs> it's just it just keeps you know people just get glued to the set. Anyway, they had to respond to this is this is basically the 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 result of the knee jerk reaction of the Parkland shooting David Hogg thing, where David Hogg's video went viral and it became the number one video on YouTube for a short amount of time until they were catching flack for it being the number one video on YouTube. So you ready? Yes. Okay. While you're going through the chat, how'd you know I was? Uh, I could see it in your eyes. I know. <laughs> I know you by now. Yeah. Plus, it's in our script. Okay, so this is a video. Oh yeah, uh, I see it. It's not a video. It's it's an article called "YouTube Will Counter Conspiracy Video Misinformation by Adding Wikipedia Info," and it's lame. There's there's not much they can do here. But Google has long been trying to address the problem of controversial YouTube content, such as conspiracy theory videos, but it hasn't enjoyed much success. Its latest <laughs> tactic isn't designed to remove or stem 
the spread of these clips, but will instead add info and links to Wikipedia articles on the subject. Therefore, oh, so they're not going to put them on a YouTube video. That's what I was thinking. That they just put it in our description box to see the truth about this incident. No, nine eleven. No. Click this, this Wikipedia article. They have and then to we'll do something. This is basically yeah. their version of bump stocks. Mm -hmm. that's, that's 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 it. So thereby providing users with alternative, as in generally accepted, viewpoints. Speaking at a panel at the South by Southwest Interactive Festival in Austin, YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki, Wo Susan, we'll just call her Susan, mm -hmm. said these information cues, I almost read clues there, will appear in the form of small cards between or be beneath YouTube videos. Uh, she added that the feature wouldn't appear solely on conspiracy videos, but also on topics and events that have inspired significant debate. One of the examples used was a video about the moon landings. Mm. A short extract from the Wikipedia description of the event appears directly below the clip and with a link to the wiki page included. Uh, she said information cues would appear alongside both documentaries and conspiracy videos on these subjects. People can still watch the videos, but then they have access to additional information, she said, according to Wired Magazine. Expect to see the feature appear in other popular internet conspiracy theory videos, including those that look at chemtrails, vaccinations, 9-11, and flat earth claims. Mm. If there is an important news event, we want to be delivering the right information, she said. She did add that we are not a news organization, even though 18% of those who use YouTube rely on the platform for their news. YouTube faced criticism for promoting content in its search results that claimed both the Las Vegas and Florida shootings were hoaxes. In the case of the latter tragedy, a clip alleging that one of the students was a crisis actor became the site's top trending video before being removed. YouTube has tried adding more human moderators, removing flag videos, and demonetizing the channels that create these controversial clips, but its algorithm continues to surface them you see, as it looks for videos that already have a high number of views. Although Wikipedia entries are written by volunteers and aren't 100% reliable, their inclusion should keep balance the conspiracy videos arguments. But it's unclear how they will work for breaking news events that may not even have a wiki page. So yeah, it's... If, if Wikipedia can have just anyone, literally just anyone, add to articles that are already there or write them to begin with, right. then why can't we, just anyone, make YouTube videos about truth? There is absolutely no difference. Yeah. Uh, most conspiracy people do not go to the wiki entries. Well, yeah. I go to wiki entries as a quick search for something to find out what the mainstream thinks. You know what I mean? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, it's good sure. for that purpose. Sure. So it's- And it's then you just sort of mentally crush it into a ball and wing it into the trash can. <laughs> It's, it's an interesting article, but the article that came out before that from the guy that used to work at YouTube who said, look, the algorithms are an automated process. And as long as pe people keep watching tons and tons of flat earth videos, the system automatically calculates that and recommends it to everybody, which is why when you're just like, oh, let's look up 9-11 videos, seven flat earth recommended for you. It's like, OK, let's go to Britney Spears haircut. Eight flat earths <laughs> recommended for you. And it just goes on and on. So it's not going in a way because once people go down the rabbit hole, they it's a it's a huge time sink. People spend a lot. You you've heard it. How many times have we heard this? It's addicting. Yes. People, flat earth as opposed to any other concept is so big that it draws you in and you can't get enough. And you're just, I mean, I still get emails to this day. It's like, where's you know, wh where can I find the how can I find the newest stuff? That's where we're running into problems now. People want resolution. The people who've been in it for a while, right. they want resolution to the information they found out. They want basically Neil deGrasse Tyson on a YouTube video saying, eh, okay, it's flat. And that's not going to happen. And not until the end, anyway. You think I mean, there will eventually be you've got to get somebody to stand? I, I was thinking about that. You've hmm. got to get somebody to knuckle under. Who is it going to be? Who are you going to put up there? You're not going to put up Bill Nye. He doesn't have enough credibility. You, I suppose you could put up uh, Neil if he wasn't allowed to take questions. Hmm. I, Because I, he doesn't do questions very, very well. Uh, you could put up Michio Kaku. I don't know really. Uh, I just can't picture that day. I just can't picture that day. I well, can then, picture then bring in the spaceship. slowly waking people up. 
Yeah, but we're already there. I mean, look, look what we look what we've done. There, yes, and there no. are so many people that yes know about and this. No, yes and no. I mean, I go to my grocery store and I know I'm the only one there, from what I can tell. Because if I even mention it to the person who's putting my groceries in the bag, they'll like look at me like, uh, stay away from the weird lady. <laughs> Every <laughs> weird cat lady. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's buying a lot of cat food and they look at each other. <laughs> <laughs> the, no, no. For every story I hear like that, though, I mean, how many we run into where people uh, the, they're looking at the same flat Earth video and and all of a sudden it's like, wait, you know? Yeah, I know. You know, people that already knew. Again, we don't have mm. any designators. We don't wear arm patches or special stickers on our cars. Or we have a salute. Yeah, we we do have that, <laughs> which is cool. Just don't put it up near your neck, I guess. But it's but it's okay. Go wild. The, the word is it is the we're we're the silent killer. We are out there and it spreads and it spreads because remember, it's remember the videos I did, the, the secret guilty pleasure. Right now, there are people that are sitting there with curtains drawn, you know, the family's asleep or or gone or they're skipping work. Yeah, sick today. <laughs> like know. the movie Soylent Green, when the woman is in the apartment and she's eating, I think, like strawberry jam or something until they bust in and get her for eating strawberry jam because she's go. not supposed to have it. Yeah. Who do you tell? I mean, I look, I have an, literally an unlimited stream of emails and they all say the same thing. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm watching all this flatter. I don't know who to talk to about it, but there's a lot of people, a lot of people because remember, think of the celebrities that we've already run into. And in ones, there's got to be many, many, many other celebrities, not that celebrities matter, but who are in on this they, that are watching they, this video that are watching Glowbusters. They're there, but they're not in the chat. They, Unless they're using assumed names, imagine that. You think Kyrie Irving's the only athlete? Of course he wasn't. There's a, there's a whole slew of athletes, but they're watching him and they're watching what the media does to him. And they're saying, okay, maybe I'm not ready for that kind of heat. Mm. Uh, look at the last couple guests that I was supposed to have on my show. You know, they want to come out. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I just don't want to deal with the backlash. You've got to have some pretty thick skin. Well, to, to be to involved in flat earth at all, if you're a content provider, you've got to have thick skin. I've had right. women write me saying, I admire you for what you do. And I see all the crazy things people say about you, which I know aren't true. Right. How do you deal with it? And I just say, ignore, delete, block in whatever order you choose. Just right. don't let it bother you. Keep on going. But a lot of people say, I couldn't take it. I couldn't take that. So I'll stay in the background and be, and be supportive. So, yeah. you know, hey, there's probably a lot of people like that in the celeb world too, for sure. There absolutely is, but it, their agent, uh, Shaquille O'Neal, perfect example. He was out for about 10 days, and that was it. And then his agent, you got a call from somebody, probably the Arizona Tea Company or one of his many endorsements. The man makes $20 million a year in endorsements, even now. He's not playing basketball. And then his agent, and you know, Shaquille says, well, what do I do? And he says, well, get, well, I got you a spot on Jimmy Kimmel. Just say something quick, get it over with, and move on. And that's what he did. Jimmy Kim and Jimmy Kimmel got the setup. You know, the agent says, ask him about flat earth right off the bat so we can get this thing out of the way. And Jimmy Kimmel, first question. So you weren't serious about flat earth? No, I wasn't serious about flat earth. I wasn't trying to imitate Shaquille. Let's just say. <laughs> so and and that's how it was done. But it. So, yes, there are, I'm sure there's plenty of celebrities out there whose agents are looking at him going with probably conversations where the agents, they're talking to the agents. Hey, dude, I'm thinking about actually talking about flat earth. It's like, don't you even think about it. He said, why, why don't you just say you've got a heroin addiction? Why don't you just say that you, you're, you, <laughs> exactly. you, you've got a, a an Asian midget fetish? Why don't you just say something like that? That'd be easier. That I can deal with. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Poor Asians and midgets because they were giving him a hard time. Sorry. You know what? I I, I should stick to my just roots. go with es Eskimos. Es Eskimos. <laughs> Eskimos and the for those damn. Who don't know, he has nothing against Eskimos. He just oh, absolutely I do. It is an unquenchable, generic. burning hatred <laughs> for the Eskimos. Exactly. And <laughs> only a, the close second, the Himalayan Sherpas. I mean, the Eskimos. My gosh, they wear those like hoods with fur around them, and they're always cold. And oh, yeah. Well, and you know, in <laughs> no small part because my father was killed by a harpoon in a whaling accident. So mm. it's a it's a little bit of a story about revenge. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's still a family friendly story though. Just like this show. <laughs> I want to say hi to Five Arts Liberalis who is here. And uh Bling Bling the BS of the ISS asked me earlier about my cat, Rory. He had a uh 
I guess, kind of like uh, stones in his bladder, uh, struvite stones. And he got some medicine and he's okay now using his litter box as he should. And everything's perfect. And also Bling Bling mentioned something else uh, that was really interesting. Um, she says, my stepdaughter and her husband and baby are visiting. And it turns out my son-in-law is a truther. She said, I didn't know this. Nice. So that goes back to what you were saying that they are among us. We might, not. even in the grocery store, like I said, there's nobody there that knows, but me, I, I could, the guy bagging my groceries actually might be a flat earther. You don't know. <laughs> you don't that's, know. That's the beauty of flat earth is that people learn about it. They're, I don't want to use the word immunized. Uh, they're indoctrinated into it and nobody knows anything it's kind of like invasion of the body snatchers you don't know and then once you have the numbers then you take over yeah yeah that's be, how we're be, gonna do it be afraid well, that is how we're going to do it i mean be openly afraid. i've always said that what we need to do people are like oh we need to go march on nasa oh, we need to do this or that we need to build numbers to yeah. me that's what we need to do and what will happen when there are more numbers i don't know I'm not don't the leader. Know. None of us don't are know. the we're, leader. We're, we're playing this by ear. We don't have yeah. a we <laughs> but, don't have a script. Well, you do. But I don't. <laughs> oh, it's your line. So yeah, <laughs> if we we don't we don't know. We we really don't know. And I and and that's what makes it kind of fun. Is we're just kind. Of, I mean, look, I'm going up. I we didn't know a couple of days ago that there was uh, the documentary was going to be up in Toronto. For or the, the name of it. Or the, even the name of it. Yeah, we were just out of the loop. We signed our waivers and said, "All right, you can use our images. Make us look like dancing monkeys." <laughs> and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to have a drink before I watch this thing. I'm gonna. Oh my just, gosh, you and I both. I know that's I what get, we'll do. I'm gonna be cringing the entire time. Going, it's oh, gonna God. be so exciting. You know that feeling when before you're gonna do something, anything, anything exciting, how you feel nervous and also. Uh, dreading but the excitement of dreading is is a high uh, in some I'm, way i'm very excited that i was uh, to be a part of it Me that too. that part is really and, and we know we were our own normal natural selves and did our best to present flat earth in the right positive way right. now if somebody takes what we do and spins it into something crazy i have no problem saying i did what i did and it was the right thing i gave it the best i had best sh best best stuff i had yes uh, you know I, I threw it out there i tried to act as a perfect gentleman and as an accurate representative of the community me too or uh, gentlewoman <laughs> and, and at no point you know it was wasn't like people were feeding me drinks uh, anything like that did so, we even have a drink during the entire filming did we uh i did in the lobby Maybe of the we hotel. Did when you were at my house. I don't yeah, know. a little bit at your place, but nothing. You know, we weren't sitting around going, fools. They're all fools. <laughs> I hope some of the fun moments are in there, like you showing everybody how you make your special popcorn. I mean, if they put that sort of stuff in the documentary about Flat Earth, I think it would be great because it would show we're just normal people. We're not some kinds of freaks. We're normal people who make popcorn, you know? Oh, just... that's what that's what Daniel told me. He goes, Look, he goes, that's why I'm I'm spending time with you. He goes, because you come off as a, just a perfectly normal, nice guy. So uh, he's like, Okay. You fooled them. <laughs> yeah. I go, Great. Now help me bury this body. <laughs> Again, um, I want to say hello to Nameless, who is in our live chat, and all is one now. And Earth Now Detoxing. Uh, that's an interesting channel name. And Flat Trotter SS. Did I say Rob Morrill? I am not sure I did. Hello to Cat Herder. That should be my name. <laughs> um, Bob Broboski. Um, Wheel the Wolfhound. Wheel the Wolfhound Mark said he loves your show on TFR. Yay, thank you. So do I, actually. It's a very fun, positive show. Very, I very much so. fun. Do you realize I've done 140 of those damn That's things? That's crazy. That's craziness. It is craziness. Um, I want to say hello to Sharif Shalan, who said that in order to um, identify each other, we should maybe wear identifying marks. Like, what would it be like? You know, like how a long time ago in gay culture, it would be like a certain ear you'd pierce your ear on or something. <laughs> what? There's nothing left. We can't do piercings. Or um, like a um, like a tattoo like a, on either our, our forehead or right hand. 
on our forehead, <laughs> right hand. Right. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I think the only thing is, is just try to be outspoken if you can. And if not, let other people do it. Cheer them along. But it would be cool if we had a little pin or button to wear, you know? Yeah. So, hmm. what else do we have to talk about? Uh, didn't you say that D Marble is going to a conference? Oh, yeah, he is. D Marble is going to a flat earth conference. And he is with a couple of other people right now, like flying across the world. I think they left last night quite late. Um, Nathan Thompson and Clark Bernard, they're headed to South Korea. There's a flat earth conference there. And uh, of course, D Marble will probably have it on his channel. Uh, maybe he'll do some Facebook lives, um, Nathan Thompson as well. I'm not that familiar with Clark, and I hate to say that, but there's no way for me to know everybody, right? Um, so I think it'll be great. I didn't even know there was a conference there. I mean, I did know about it from D Marble, but I didn't know about it like, you know, uh, the conference that, the, the one that's going on in the UK, the convention, I know about that coming up in late April. And I know about the one coming up uh, in Denver and the one that's coming up uh, in uh, Toronto, Canada. Right. Or Edmonton, Canada. Excuse me. I'm oh, Edmonton. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Edmonton. Yeah, yeah we've we got to get the deal. I got to run promos on that thing eventually. We get time. Yeah. Let's see. I just got an email from Carolyn Clark, who is part of the documentary team, who says, thank you for your kind email in response to the film premiere, you know, her mentioning that she wanted us to go. She said, I'm still waiting on a schedule and details from the festival. I'll report back to you both soon. Right. right. Yeah, because we can't, we want to show up the same time that they are. Otherwise, you yeah, know, because I'm sure they're not going to be festival. And maybe what if we came in too early or too late and the, the showing? We well, like, can't stay we, or we missed it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're going to want to be there for I think two or three days to make sure they're there for the showing, and then of course they're going to probably they're probably going to stay extra just to see what happens to the project. I wonder how long it is. Oh, it's going to be got to be a couple hours. Yeah, because the footage you got to remember, they shot up here one uh, a full day and a half in Seattle. And we don't know how long that they spent with Jaron or Bob. Probably the exact same amount of time. So or Chris maybe. Pontius. They, they had two else. days with them with the eclipse. There was a couple days with you down at NASA in Houston. There was That's you right. solo with them. They were three days out at Raleigh. They've got a ton of content. So they can turn this into something much, much bigger if the right person came along. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. I do want to show something really cool that has nothing to do with Flat Earth except for the connections that we make as Flat Earthers. This is from Nathan Oakley. And his wife, Paula, and their daughter, Eleanor. It's a uh, thing for a Christmas gift that I sent uh, them, which nice. really was clothing for Eleanor. It was my opportunity to buy pretty dresses and pretty girls' clothes. Cool. Because, uh, you know, I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have children. So, you know, I have cats and they don't wear clothes very well. <laughs> hey, you know what I just thought of? And, and I was looking at my notes here. What a great title of the movie would have been. Mm -hmm. oh, this is my segue. I, I got it. I got a flat earth clues. No, it <laughs> no, it would have been the shape of water. 200 proofs. <laughs> no, it would have been the shape of water. Oh, yeah, but that was already taken. That was already taken by that the would best. would be a fantastic title. That would have been neat. And, and Why by the way, you I mentioned the movie because you mentioned it on your TFR show last night. Well, so. I, I downloaded it not because it won best picture, I, even though I was curious about it because it's like, oh, really? It won best picture? Uh, I don't I've not seen it. I don't even know anything about it. Uh, if, uh, I'll give you the I'll give you the the spoiler alert on this one. It okay. was directed by Guillermo de, del Toro, which is mm -hmm. a Mexican director who has directed a whole bunch of stuff. And it's about it's the, the title really throws you because the, the shape of water that title that helps us because as you know it, we we've been using the whole water finds its level and so the water. movie plot is flat is what you're saying. Well, no, it's. <laughs> It steals it. I consider it kind of a, a cobblestone movie, meaning it's a movie that's made up of good parts of other movies that you know about. So, I mean, and I, I was counting them as I was watching this. I was going, how brilliant. I mean, remember how I said there's like there's nothing original now. So we're we're reintroducing a whole bunch of different concepts. So like in, in this movie, literally in the first hour, there was like a Forrest Gump scene, a Magnolia scene. 
Dances with Wolves. I really liked the movie Magnolia, and I never saw Forrest Gump. How about that? Again, the Android stuff, you just really shouldn't you shouldn't just softball it to me but isn't this movie promoting uh, who, some kind of weird agenda who I hasn't what who I've, hasn't seen no sorry i gotta go back to this real quick who hasn't seen forrest gump i didn't see titanic either oh my god there's a bunch of those sorts of movies that are very very popular that somehow when i look at them or when i used to look at them when the trailer would come out or i'd see an advertisement it would just be like eh, not for me and you really expect we're gonna get married which will inevitably lead to your untimely demise Mm, that would be your untimely demise. See, see, that's the. That's yeah. why it can never be. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So, uh, cobblestone movie, Forrest Gump, Magnolia, Dances with Wolves scene. The the whole thing. Uh, it, it, they stole a scene from Splash. The the. Uh, tell me you saw Splash from the nineteen eighties. No, Darryl never saw Hannah, that one either. I know Tom. what it's about. Daryl Hannah Murray. Holy smokes! Okay. The it just whole, didn't appeal to me. The whole premise is a mute cleaning woman who works at a government facility who falls in love with their special project which is basically the creature from the black lagoon it's like a fish man and it's a love story between the fish man who can't talk and i really think you're making up this plot right now no no i'm not making up this no. plot. however if you think that's an original plot i mean all these things i mean they stole from a whole bunch of movies i mean everything there wasn't an original part of this entire movie they're going well no it was it was a love story between the creature of the black lagoon and this creature i'm going no 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 because the director guillermo del toro directed hellboy 2 and you're thinking, well, what does that have to do with anything? Hellboy 2, there was a little part in there where Abe, the fish man, otherwise known as Blue, had a relationship. It was, it was this budding romance with a princess, an elf princess type person. And it didn't, didn't last very long because she died. And that's all this movie was, was an expansion of that. That's all it was. Where the fish man, only to, to make it less obvious, they made it to where the fish guy and the the the, the love interest, they neither of them could speak. So they kind of spoke in sign language. She taught him sign language. That was the movie. And, and Gar it, he, the director wrote that story years ago. Look up Hellboy 2, how many years ago that was. And he took it and he expanded it and it won Best Picture. There really wasn't that much competition this year, but still. More more interesting to me than all that crap I just threw at you was the title, The Shape of Water. Yeah. The, the, of water, the, yeah. what has that got to do with anything I just said? Nothing. Nothing. Just Nothing water. Is water is involved, but that's you know. it. But it's like the shape of water, the shape of him, the shape of the love story. I'm 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 trying to figure out exactly. It's a it's a nice flowy title. But, but isn't it, there something involving the Soviets and painting them as the bad guys, which is what's happening geopolitically? They're trying no, to do that. Too. No, in fact, the, the Soviets were involved in this movie. They, they were, but they, oh. it was just one agent that was that was trying to. Uh, they they he was a he was a double agent that was in the base. He was going to sabotage the program mm -hmm. for the Americans, but he ends up helping the girl sneak Fish Boy out and to the ocean. And again, the whole splash reference. Is this Seriously. Free Willy Part Two? No, it's Splash. The end of the end of Splash, where instead yeah. of the mermaid with Daryl Hannah, it's Fish Guy, which yeah. was the creature of the Black Lagoon. Everything was stolen from something else, and and I can't I can't accuse the director from stealing from Hellboy Two because it's his story. So he actually just took he didn't steal from anyone else for the 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 sub the subtext. Anyway, The Shape of Water, great title though. Recommend the movie. Do I recommend it? Yeah, of course I recommend it. But it's uh it's interesting. It's a it's a cool little flick. Great cast. Well, Bling Bling says it's one of the worst movies that she's ever seen. <laughs> no, she's wrong. Look, well, you can you can say me. what you want. You can't win Best Picture with an utter piece of crap. Now, if she she thinks that something yeah, else should have been, I think it. there's been some winners that were pretty bad. No, no, no. There's been winners that shouldn't have won over other movies. I mean, yeah. okay. Here's a question. Like the Hurt Locker should have never beat Avatar. Saving Private Ryan should have never I, lost. I didn't even to, make it through Avatar, by the way. I, I saw, saw part six, of it. saw it six times in the theater. Then I left. I'm like, I know everything that's going to happen. This is Dances with Wolves. It was Dances with Wolves. This is just like, no, no, thank you. It didn't feel right to me. Um, Daniel Reza in the live chat said the 80s were rad, the 90s were a riot, and people here are saying that the 90s movies, 80s and 90s, authentic intent, Josh is saying that's the best time for movies. You've got an actual year, you feel. 1999. The best year. 
1999. Uh, in fact, hang on. I am going to pull this sucker up for you. Where is that sucker? 1999. Party like it's 1999? Yep. Okay. 1999. And I challenge anyone to do this. Uh, it was literally the best year in movies. It was the peak. Our watershed mark. It was that was it. The when, peak of civilization when it comes to Hollywood. It was. When it comes to Hollywood, it was like the producers didn't know if 2000 was going to happen. So they greenlit mm. every project they possibly could. I'm going to rattle them off real quick in alphabetical order. Ready? All God. this stuff happened in 1999. 10 Things I Hate About You, The 13th Warrior, American Beauty, The First American Pie, Any Given Sunday, The Astronaut's Wife, The Second Austin Powers, Being John Malkovich. Blair Witch Project, Blast from the Past, The Boondock Saints, Boys Don't Cry, uh, she won an Oscar for that one, Cruel Intentions, Deep Blue Sea, The First Deuce Bigelow, Dogma, Drop Dead Gorgeous, Election, End of Days, Eyes White Shut, Fight Club, Galaxy Quest, Girl Interrupted, The Green Mile, The Iron Giant, The First Lake Placid, Magnolia, Man on the Moon, The First Matrix, The First Mummy, Mystery Men, The Ninth Gate, Office Space, The Sixth Sense, Sleepy Hollow, The South Park Movie, Son of Sam, Star Wars Episode One, Talented Mr. Ripley, Thirteenth Floyd, Thirteenth Floors, Toy Story Two, Varsity Blues, and a James Bond movie, just to throw in for good measure. Well, I think there's quite a lot of really good movies in there, and some that I had no interest ever in seeing. But oh, Bling Bling, the BS of the ISS, speaking about uh, the shape of water, says that the character having sex with the fish. I mean, that is kind of weird. And kind oh, of promoting oh, oh, an it agenda. Rated, it was. A, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. I left out the best part. It's a rated R movie. It is but not. It's, it is it's a. Just, uh, it's having sex with animals. Well, I mean, it's more of an. It's no it, respect it, for animals. No, no, no. He wasn't. He wasn't just a. It wasn't like it was a donkey or something. It was a. It was a. It was My, like a, a bee taking the show lower than it's ever been. <laughs> it's we, not like. It's not like a donkey show, Patricia. You have to go to Tijuana for that. Uh, okay. The, um, <laughs> oh, see, trying to break character. Are you? Is, do I see any color in those cheeks? Nope. No. Nope. I'm oh, not my. blushing. <laughs> okay, so yes, he was a. You could tell. Look, expand your mind a bit. He was a member of an older civilization. He had special powers. He absolutely was sentient. He could. He could heal people. He could do all sorts of fun things. Yes. He had, uh, yeah, they, there were some sex scenes. There weren't actual sex scenes. They weren't going to go that far. But it was implied that she was sleeping with him on a regular basis. Mm. So she was, you know, yeah. And that was different. So if you're not ready for that, and if that if that's the agenda you think they're pushing, yeah, maybe, I guess. But is it any different? Look, we've had movies that people have had sex before with aliens. Avatar, right? Although that was more of a... I never got that far in Avatar, weirdly enough. Uh, Star, okay, Starman. That's going back all the way to the 80s. There's some alien sex for you. Jeff Bridges. And, and what about... Uh... And she got pregnant in that one, and we didn't even... That would have been different if this girl would have gotten pregnant, and she did Okay, didn't. well, you know, I don't know. I just I just want humans who love each other to do that, not animals and people. Well, it was... It, Is it just me? Here? No, no, no. It was an interesting story because remember she we was accepted. lost our gosh she darn was, morality. She was accepted. Sorry, I'm swatting a mosquito, and I didn't, I'm still on camera. The um, uh, it was because she was accepted. She, you know, she wasn't exactly a looker, and so I could relate. And she, and plus she was mute, and so and this was back. It was set back in the fifties. So she realized it's like, oh, I'm not going to basically not going to be landing anybody, and so she landed somebody really, really special. And she she was the one that pushed this, which was interesting. I don't know. I still think it's worth it to see. You get. I, I love the director. Well, you know her. what? It is cool that you like what you like. You know, yeah. nothing wrong with it. And I'm saying that I wouldn't like it without even having seen it. But so there you, go. there you go. It's 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 a different movie. Now I don't know. I don't even remember really what it was up against. But I watched it because I have to eventually watch the best pictures just to see what's what the what the bar's set at. <laughs> Frequencies Illuminated says alien sex. Wasn't that every old Star Trek episode? Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, start, yes, every, going all the way back Women to Women painted Kurt, green, Kurt, I mean, you know. Yeah. Kurt got a lot of alien ass. Yes. Plain and simple. And so did uh Riker from Next Generation. Really? And so did everybody in every series. So this was the only the only difference was this guy couldn't talk his vocal cords. It was he's he was aquatic. Mm. It's like having sex with Aquaman. 
<sighs> Gosh, something I've never what? Really it's thought about baby before and never will. <laughs> this sort of material right here. Let's change the topic to something biblical, <laughs> shall we? And just clean this place really? right Really? Let's yes. okay, biblical. Okay. Chad Taylor is a guy who wrote a book. It's called Where Are We? Earth According to the Bible. And he wrote this weighty tome. Here it is. It's going to be hard to show it here. I got a copy of that. Yes, indeed. And um, the whole thing about this book, it's about where are we? Where is heaven? Where is God? Right. And do we believe that heaven is up? And it's a very interesting book. It's got a lot of flat earth aspects to it. And Chad has written a little dedication to me. It says to Patricia, thank you for your hard work and dedication in helping people to start to question and begin to understand the true nature of this world we live in. I've enjoyed your videos since early on, and I look forward to many more to come. God bless you, Chad Taylor. And it was really lovely that he sent this to me and sent that to you. Yep. And if you want a copy of this book, I don't get any proceeds off this. In the description box of this video, I have all the links that you would need to find to get yourself a copy of the book. And, you know, he's a person who contacted me early on and said he was writing a book. And I get a lot of people contacting me and saying, I'm going to write a book. And a lot of times you never hear back from them. Well, guess what? Chad Taylor saw it through. There's illustrations in here. There's a hundred different examples of um, Earth according to the Bible in this book. And as I said, it's quite a thick book. And I'll just show you this really, you know, it's, it's, um, it's got a lot to it. So yeah, there's a lot of illustrations in it and it's great. So in the description box of this video, check it out. If this is something you're interested in with Chad Taylor, I want to say hello to validation boy and Mark Ofsky. Mark says, I don't know where we are, but I know where we're not bingo. Exactly. Exactly. There's a, did you, you probably got the slew of emails about the other documentary that's coming out from South America. Same Tell sort of us thing. more. Only it's, I believe it's convex. Well, it doesn't really matter. It's yes. still a flat earth, but there's no dome. They talked about it on Globebusters. Uh, right. Two shows back, I think. Right. And the modeling's pretty interesting. And hey, look, why not? Let's get out there. See see what Well, see the what wording of convex earth, it makes you say, what? What? What are they doing? Yeah, no, which is why are you can't use those terms. Flat earth people... in, they might be flat earth enemies when they come up with this thing. Um, we don't Maybe. know yet. We we'll don't see. know. Um, there's no such thing as really in technically flat earth enemies because the truth is the truth and people may come against us and that's just the way it's going to be, you know, just like any sort of documentary or film that comes out about flat earth or any of the uh, um, PR that comes from doing meetups and conventions right. and conferences, you know, they're going to take shots at us. Yeah. And there is nothing that we can do about it except hold our heads up and act in a dignified manner and try to represent flat earth the best way that we know how. That's it. That's all we can do. I don't know if you remember the conversation you and I had, oh boy, at least a year ago now, mm -hmm. where I said, you're going to have to get used to it because you think the shots and the comments of YouTube are are, are biting. Wait till the documentary comes <laughs> Out. Oh yes, and then all of a sudden you get somebody high I mean, level hate will be coming down on the head. Well, anybody you know, involved so it's in like that the, New, the New York Post movie critic? Yeah. Oh my god, it's like <laughs> do you read it or do you not read it? You know how do you dare? I don't know. Whatever comes comes. Yeah. You know, yeah. we did it. I did it my way. I mean, yeah, that's what we've done. We've done flat Earth our way and try to get it out the best way we can and. Like you said, people will take shots and let them. It's fine. Yeah. Again, it, every Truth time they take for shots, itself. every time every time they dr they'll just drag more people in, and and honestly, p bringing people in by trying to portray it. I'm not saying that Daniel, of course, will do it, but if if the reviewers kind of bring it as a circus sideshow, then yeah, yeah, it'll bring more people in because they'll be saying, "Oh, I, I want to make fun of the freaks," and then we get them. It's La Brea yeah, Tar. None of us are freaks. Sorry, we're not. <laughs> so no, there's a few freaks. Yeah, yeah I guess so. Yeah. A few freaks make it interesting. You know, you know who you are. <laughs> yes, you do. <sighs> I want to say hello to David of all people, free people, and Zoe of the channel Be Here in Love. And did I mention P Mars? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't, but hello, P Mars, who says there's nothing as sexy as an attractive woman with a book in her hand. Well, you know what? Or man, definitely. Thanks. Oh, 
I think there was a meme going yeah. on uh, maybe five, six years ago, and it showed a like a, a home library, and it said, I'm going to butcher this, but it simply said something along the lines of, if you go to someone's house to have sex with them and they don't have any books, get out. I agree with that completely. Yeah. I met this one man and started dating him till I went to his home and he only had one book. Now you'd say, well, maybe the Bible. I'd be like, okay, I'd be down with that. No, the only book he had in his house was the phone book, I kid you not. So I got out of there. It's a well, good sign. You're basically what kind dooming, of the, dealing with? You're dooming the younger generations, though, because most of them won't ever buy a book. I don't even like Kindle devices. I know it's convenient. And yeah. a lot of people love them when they go on trips. I do go on a fair amount of trips. I actually love a book. I love a feel of a book. You know, you know don't I have a lot of new books a lot of that I haven't got around to reading yet, but I'll buy them and I know I'll be reading this soon. And then a bunch of old books too. And I, I really treasure them. You know, the people that read the Bible on Kindle, when they bring the Kindles to church, I'm sorry that just smacks of those future movies where, you know, where you're mixing the future with oh, the yes. old, you know, it's like, really, you're, you're using an electronic book device to, to read the Bible. Really? Because you're that's and and yet you're going to claim that you're making headway against science. No, 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 no. Uh, sorry, paper. You know, gilded edges, bound, heavy. I remember reading the book Little Women, and I think I was in fourth grade, and it was from the school library. Right. And uh, when we'd have recess or free time, I would read, and of course, I'd read it at home. I remember the smell of that copy of Little Women. Oh yeah. It was just that smell of a book that's been around in a school for a long time. I don't know what that would mean. Children's sweat and urine. I don't know what that no, would be. No, no, no. It's just a musty. That musty. <laughs> yeah, that's really the word. A I mean, school we all cafeteria, know it. dusty erasers. I'm not sure, but it was a lovely, lovely uh, smell in that book. And it made reading the book more real. Yeah. All the characters in the book. It's so. tactile. You, you get it. Yeah. Same, same oh, reason, I hate to say it, I still have envelopes. Still have stamps. Yes. You know, just, I like just, envelopes. And I even have sealing wax. I even have an embosser that I can press down in an envelope and it puts my initials on it. Uh, really? And that's not left over from the <laughs> your royal court? <laughs> yes, as is the tiara I'm wearing today. Because you're 500 years old. <laughs> yes, it's true. Except for the vampire part. <laughs> I've been here for That's exactly a millennia. what a vampire would say. <laughs> But yeah, it is true. I do like a lot of um, traditional ways of behaving and being and ways of life. But I also like modern things. I love my cell phone, got to admit. You know, I love that ability to instantly communicate with people. Um, so I, I kind of like the aspect of the world we're living in now, although I often think, oh, I wish I were born in X, Y, and Z time frame. But I used to say that, not anymore. Ever since Flat Earth and all this truth about all these other things has come into my brain, I am so happy I am here right now in the midst with everyone here while all this is happening. Yep. We're living in the midst of history. It's amazing. Agreed. Agreed. Yay and us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how many, how, many, how many causes or conspiracies or theories do you have where the mainstream corporations are addressing it almost in real time? Mm, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, mean I, I read that reading that article. Oh yeah, by the way, YouTube's responding about you know flat Earth stuff, and I, I'm not even really breaking a sweat. It's like yeah, yeah, whatever. Just throw it on the pile with the rest of the articles. And there's other articles that you know other concepts out there just scrambling to get any attention, and we're doing it really by doing nothing. It's just happening, and we're now to that stage. Now we're at that that moment. I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna break open here. You wait. I want to say hi to Chris Topher, and maybe I did that already. And Kennedy Walker and Cami has graced us with her presence here, as Red Squirrel has too. And uh, everyone in the chat is having a nice time. I appreciate everyone being here. Oh, Elspeth Awake just showed up. Hi. Um, I know there's lots of other things that you could listen to, and I do appreciate everyone who decides to stop by here and say hi for a few moments. And I encourage you, even if you're in the live chat, to come back after the video gets onto YouTube and come by and make a comment. Because usually what happens is those who are in the chat never come back. So come back, please. <laughs> we need you. <laughs> yes. Let's do it.
Um, Bob of Globus just wants to know where your funky glasses are lately. What happened with those things? Uh, I gave them to someone at a meetup. I don't remember who. That's cool. But those they were cheap glasses. They remember they had no lenses. You did and, it as a um, prank on everybody, and I even thought you had got glasses. So I, I actually <laughs> probably could use some reading glasses at this point. Yeah. I've got the uh, mono vision with only one contact lens in my left eye, which is my reading eye, and the other eye is fine for distance. And I've still not mastered the art of putting it in on the first try, but I am getting getting better. Yeah. You can tell by how long it takes me to put in context by how late the show starts. <laughs> Seriously. Um, I wanted to mention somebody in our live chat named Krista said that uh, she's with me on loving the old school way. I do. I like old school courting and sending a woman flowers and a man opening doors and a woman cooking a nice meal for a man. And of course, sometimes the woman opening the door for the guy or the woman buying flowers or the man cooking the meal, of course. But I like that beginning to a relationship where there's that old school romance, not hookups or anything or sexting. I mean, that just, ugh, no. I mean, I don't really date. Um, the last time I did didn't turn out so well. And I hope to someday again, when yeah. the right person comes along. But I like, um, I like things that are beautiful and romantic, even if flat earth has opened my eyes to lots of lies and maybe that old way of being is part of a lie system. I still like it. I still think you can be a truth seeker and enjoy some of that old fashioned stuff too. Well, there you go. <laughs> Bob of Globebuster says, last time I tried old school courting, the judge issued a warrant. <laughs> way to ruin my, my dream. What was that line from... <laughs> from adam's family it's like uh oh you're such a lady killer and he goes acquitted <laughs> that's a good one you know i used to love the adam's family the original tv show sure. and how um i think i saw part of the movie not the whole thing but just that of course it was a you know not a real relationship but just the way that he treated her oh, as if she were right the most wonderful, beautiful, intelligent, attractive woman on the face of the earth, which is how you should treat the one you love, be they male yeah, or female. And they were always doing these huge romantic overtures. Love it. You know, broke out in a dance and love flowers it. and you know. love all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. What else is happening here? Ute here, which is also Ute Hube, depending upon channel he's using. He says round doesn't mean ball, but ball does mean round, brilliant point. Let's see, you know, we've all noticed that the powers that should not be, they're all saying the word round all of the time. Yeah, that round thing drives me yep. nuts. And I'm trying to correct him as- They're as doing it to, God, it's such a scheme they've got going. They're really, really, really smart. The way they're trying to brainwash everybody. The um, you know, the thing I've been latching onto lately, uh, because I've been getting more visuals, is the vacuum thing. The oh, I sent yes. you that little video of the of the steel rail. Road yes, I've car. seen people pass it around where yeah. you, a big you know, like a train car, all yeah. of a sudden whoosh, crushes yeah. like a like a tin can you'd have a soft drink in. Yeah, all you'd have to do Instantly. is apply. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's the part that's so jarring is that you apply a 90% vacuum field to it and that car gets, it's like a monster just crushed it instantly. It's so, so, so fast. And then you all of a sudden you realize it's like, wait, if there was any sort of hole in anything, that's the, it's the speed we're not used to. If you had even the tiniest hole in a submarine or the ISS, it would suck all the air out and the air in your lungs and pretty much everything in your body you'd be dead in, in a second. You wouldn't be like scrambling around going, oh, get duct tape, hurry, hurry. You'd be like, that'd be it. it. It's, it's over. It's that fast. And so, and the, the bigger thing there was there's no footage of any modern astronaut in a spacesuit in a vacuum chamber. So what we need is Neil deGrasse Tyson to be in a vacuum chamber in a spacesuit. In a space a big space and, suit, a really big spacesuit. The reason why you're never, they always train in a pool never in a vacuum and you're thinking and, and in fact it's so counterintuitive why would you be training in a pool a pool is this water and you're pushing stuff vacuum you're not pushing anything there's no resistance so why are you training in a swimming pool and that's because a swimming pool looks good on camera and you have to do something you have to train in something 
So either you train in, with freaking wires, you know, fl- which is kind of irritating. Or swimming pool is probably the easiest thing, but it's low. There's no stress and there's no stress on the suit. You Here's what happens. If you want to look it up, it's really fascinating. If you haven't seen it already, there's a shot from either the late 50s or early 60s with an astronaut in one of the few ones I've ever seen in a vacuum chamber. And the second that thing, you know, they crank it up, they crank it up. And as soon as it goes to like almost vacuum, he he blacks out. He like falls to the floor. It's over because his suit, if there's even the tiniest flaw in it, uh, the air tries to to rush out and the suit becomes like like a piece of wood. You can't do anything in it. So it's it's a good con. Everyone's bought into it. It's And I thought it's like, wait, haven't we seen an astronaut in a freaking vacuum chamber? Yeah, you have. In a movie, right? Um, and they've they've crossed movies with what they call fact so easily in all of our minds because they've dumbed us down that we think we've seen things that we haven't because yeah. we've seen the movie Gravity, for example. The power of a vacuum is no joke, and the power guys, of Hollywood is no joke. I'm I'm including as long as I do Strange World shows, I'm including that little um, the first part, like the first ten seconds of that railroad car as part of my intro with a little thing down below that says steel railroad car versus vacuum because it is it it absolutely will wake you up bob of globuster says the train car was crushed with less than 14.7 psi of pressure yeah hmm. i can see that i want to say hello to mark of pale queens who is here um red squirrel says that tonight i look like a lovely aryan bridesmaid i guess because i'm wearing my wow. saint patty's day yeah but i don't know if well I don't know. Would that be Aryan bridesmaid? Yeah, I guess. I think that's red what... hair Aryan bridesmaid. Well, I think Aryans are. Gosh, I don't want to be pushing well, certain flatters. Well, it wouldn't like it wouldn't be red wouldn't... hair, blonde hair, blue eyes, green eyes. Yeah, whatever. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think it was a nice compliment. Uh, so. Carolyn Gutman Day is here as well. She has the best comments. You know what? So does Mark Ofsky. Mark Ofsky makes a comment, and I can't say anything other than, I agree with you, Mark. That's my comment to everything he says. Like, yeah, what he said. Nice. Two smart people. And they're actually talking to each other in the chat, which makes a lot of sense. What else? Um, Kennedy Walker says, I'm making lasagna. (laughs) I wish I were eating lasagna. What else is going on? Um, Arwen says more like Celtic. Maybe that would be a better. There you go. Celtic. And leave it to Arwen to come up with that sort of specification. Yep. <laughs> yeah, there needs to be more green in the thingy up there. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think we've managed to create a whole show. What do you think? I think so. And we covered, I think, all the bases. Flat Earth, movie reviews, sexual acts, uh, other inappropriate topics. Mm-hmm. And yet you didn't break character the entire time. I'm impressed. <laughs> that's because this is me like it or not <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i'll wait i'll wait until we're sitting next to each other at the at the premiere at the premiere it'll be probably the feeling of wanting to throw up laugh and cry at the same time because it'll be very exciting to i'll be doing i'll probably be doing this half the time going oh god exactly no. hands over your eyes like i don't want to look but you're still looking kind of like a horror movie yeah yeah i i yeah I know I'm sure. Look, it's it's the beginning, it's the beginning of the next stage. So it has to be done. And it's not going to be the only time I'm sure we'll have to see it. I want to say hello to Stephen Chess. And uh, I think I mentioned Zane the musician. He is here in our live chat. Um somebody made a really good comment. Oh, I do want to say Flat Trotter SS brings up what we started talking about, which was Stephen Hawking. He says, rest in peace, Stephen Hawking. Indeed, regardless of whether he died a long time ago and was replaced or all of the theories that we discussed, at this point in time, they are ill using a, another human being no more. So, And I will say what others won't because it's somewhat inappropriate, which is, look, as far as I'm concerned, he's a chess piece that we no longer have to deal with. And that's what they were using him as, a chess piece, actually. Yeah. And uh, we're going to end with a joke from Ute, who says, what do you call a room full of astrophysicists? Answer, a congregation. Oh. It's true. The ball is the religion, for sure. It's true. 
All right, Mark, until we meet again and live chat, until we meet again, this concludes this episode of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Please give the video a thumbs up and come back if you have the mind to and leave a comment and share the video and um, subscribe to this channel, Mark's channel, and definitely check the description box for the book that I mentioned from Chad Taylor, how to get that. And definitely keep a look, on, excuse me, keep an eye out on um, D Marble's channel as he brings us um, some Korean adventures with a couple of his friends as he's at the Flat Earth Conference there. They'll be landing pretty soon, I'm sure. Exciting times we live in. It's nice to be doing it with all of us together. All right, till we meet again, see you later. Keep it flat. Long live Flat Earth. <laughs>